Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Duality 9Xers around the world. Welcome back to another exciting episode right here on Duality 9X, where we got a crazy lineup of videos uh, to share with you guys. Very scary, creepy, paranormal videos where we're going to need your help to separate fact from fiction. So real or fake? Well, that's a decision you need to make. So uh, if you guys are new to this space, please smash the like, subscribe, and comment. Tell us your comments are going to be able to help us ascertain uh, what you think is real, what you think is fake. Uh, I'm going to do my best to try to respond to as many comments as possible. And uh, if you guys are returning users, well, welcome back. Now, you guys know the drill. Hopefully you guys are ready, settled in. I've got my beverage here. Crack that baby open. And if you guys are ready, without further ado, let's get it. Were their lifelike features, glassy eyes, and frozen expressions can seem creepy, especially in dim lighting. They sometimes give you this feeling that they might be more than just toys or inanimate objects. But what if that was true? What if there is something, a supernatural entity? trapped inside. In this video, we will cover three of the world's most hunted dolls and take a look at an island filled we with them. We, we covered some of these dolls, folks. Number one, Robert the Doll. A straw doll about the size of a young boy sits in a small wooden chair holding a worn out toy dog. With his faint smile and this creepy feeling that he is aware of his surroundings, Robert has gained a reputation for being the most hunted doll of all time. There are many urban legends surrounding Robert. Some say that he was crafted by a doll maker who practiced black magic or that a mischievous spirit was trapped inside. Now, the most common legend about Robert goes like this. In the early 1900s, in Key West, Florida, a young boy named Robert Eugene Otto received the doll as a birthday gift from his grandfather. The young boy later named the doll after himself. While Robert seemed like an ordinary doll, it did not take long for the boy's family to notice strange events whenever the doll was around. At night, they would hear sounds coming from the boy's room, giggling, weird noises, and the sounds of furniture being moved. Mm. Every time the parents entered the room, they would find it in a complete mess. And when they asked their son about what had happened, he would always point at the doll and insist he did it. The spooky events did not stop here. The mother would catch glimpses of the doll moving, or find it in a different spot than where it was before. Despite all of this, the doll stayed in the family house. Even as Otto grew older, he would come back home and often spend time in his room painting. Always there was his doll, Robert, propped up against the window of the room. Kids passing by would look up and claim to see Robert move from one side of the window to the other. Visitors to the house would describe how the doll's facial expression changed as they spoke, as if the doll was listening. In 1972, Otto passed away, and his beloved doll was stored in the family house. Eventually, in 1994, Robert was donated to the Fort East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. Some people claim to experience misfortunes after visiting Robert. According to local folklore, the doll has caused car accidents, job loss, divorce, and other misfortunes. There's even a belief that taking a picture of Robert without asking for permission can get you cursed. The crazy thing that some visitors go as far as leaving letters of apology to Robert for any disrespectful behavior, as they believe that if you don't show him proper respect, bad luck will follow you. Number 2. Annabelle This one's scary, folks. Annabelle is another famous haunted doll. She even has 
a series of movies based on her terrifying story. However, the real Annabelle is actually a raggedy Ann doll. It currently resides in the Warren Occult Museum. There you can also find other haunted objects that are said to hold demonic spirits and curses. So, how did Annabelle end up there? Well, according to the urban legend, in the 1970s, Annabelle was given as a gift to a nursing student named Donna. Donna and her roommate Angie started to experience strange and mysterious events. The doll would move on its own, leave cryptic messages, and even try to attack them. Afterward, a psychic told the students that the doll was possessed by the spirit of a deceased girl named Annabelle. Despite the girl's efforts to accept and take care of the doll, it continued to behave in a malicious way. Eventually, Donna and Andy sought the help of paranormal investigators Lauren and Ed Warren. They determined that the doll was indeed possessed by an evil spirit. The Warrens took Annabelle and locked her away in a glass case in their occult museum. The case is said to be placed and sealed in a special way to prevent the spirit from escaping. Number 3. Okiko uh you know Annabelle is is pretty pretty scary guys um you know there's a few there's movies that are related to this um you guys can easily find that on Google the 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 doll that they depict in the movies clearly looks a lot more scarier from the actual doll that they're act that this movie is based on right the actual doll is like a raggedy n right and it looks completely harmless but apparently quite sinister very, very interesting. One of the most famous Japanese urban legends related to haunted dolls. At first glance, Okiko looks like a typical traditional Japanese doll. However, the story behind Okiko is both spooky and tragic. The story goes back to 1918, where a teenager named Ishiki Suzuki purchased the doll for his younger sister, Okiko, who gave the doll its name. It was a special doll that Okiko loved so much, but unfortunately, after two years, Okiko fell ill and passed away at a very young age. Her family, wanting to keep her memory alive, decided to place the doll on their family altar. Little did they know, that the doll would soon become the center of some mysterious and creepy events. One day, the family noticed something really bizarre about the doll. Its hair was yeah, slowly growing longer. As if things couldn't get any creepier, they began hearing strange noises in their house at night. And it did not end there. The doll started to appear in their dreams. When this kept happening over and over again, the family came to the conclusion that Okiko's spirit was still connected to the doll, making its presence known. Eventually, they decided to donate the doll to their local temple. They believed that the temple would be a safe place for Okiko's doll to reside and her spirit to find peace. Hmm. In case you want to hear more stories about hunted dolls, there is an entire island filled with them. This island is located in Mexico and known as the Island of the Dolls. On shore, you will be greeted by hundreds of dolls, some big, some small, some gigantic. No humans live there anymore, only dolls. This island has gained a reputation as one of the most haunted and creepiest places in Mexico. I heard about this Many one. visitors claim to experience paranormal activities, such as the dolls whispering or moving their heads and arms. Others claim that they've seen the doll's eyes following them. So why there are many dolls there? And how did all this begin? Legend has it that it all started when a man named Don Julian Berera left his wife and family and moved to this small island. At the same day he arrived there, 
a little girl fell in the water canal and drowned. Pereira tried to rescue her, but unfortunately, he failed. The girl was lost and her body was never found. That night, Pereira kept hearing screaming and sounds of torture, so he believed that he had been haunted by her spirit. The next day he decided to hang a doll, as he thought that this would keep her spirit happy. But that did not stop there. He kept doing that and hanging more and more dolls until the day he died. The crazy thing that Pereira was found lifeless in the water canal, drowned in the same spot where the little girl was said to have drowned. Oh boy, uh, you know, I've, I've showcased creepy dolls, scary dolls uh, in earlier episodes and uh, it's it's one of those it's it's one of those topics of um, that that incites a lot of discussion. Uh, th there's plenty of you know plenty of, of of things that people have to say when it comes to creepy dolls. Um, I've also had some video that I was able to share with dolls physically moving um, while being held, you know, by you know by a young girl or or somebody playing with these dolls. It's it's just so creepy. Um, yeah, Robert the doll. That that one. Wow. Um, and, and 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 you you know like there's like a track record apparently of people that go see these dolls. In some cases, some people see these dolls and absolutely nothing happened, right? So completely superstitious, right? Um, I mean, again, it depends on how you perceive it. But some people swear by the fact that you know visiting these dolls is not is not a good thing, and if anything, brings a bad omen to those that go and see them. So, um, yeah. It's not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. So here you have a video with the door just slightly opening up. Doesn't look like anyone's around. The bed sheets are starting to move. It looks like somebody dragged that bed sheet into a nearby closet. And, and you don't see anybody around. Oh. Somebody gets dragged onto the ground and it looks like an out of body superhero of some sort, like an angel comes out and beats off a would be invader. Check this video, look at that, look in the background. It's like something pulls this blanket. Her hair goes up now. Oh my gosh. She just realized that her hair just went up. Now guys, th this first video, right? I, I, I heard some comments how some people thought it, it was fake, you know, like somebody had maybe something attached to the door handle and it opened up and you know that's possible and that somebody attached some kind of a string or rope you know that was hard to see with the naked eye and it pulled the bed sheets again quite possible but the way the woman the person who was sleeping on the bed was yanked right off the bed uh i, I don't know how you fake that you know just scary Elementary school in Mexico had been telling her fellow teachers that her classroom was haunted. They laughed it off and laughed at her not believing until finally she captured this on camera. Now they all firmly believe her classroom is haunted. Take a look at this footage. I'm not sure what they were saying. Um, it clearly doesn't look like anyone was in the room. They might have actually turned off the electricity or power or the, the power to the fans, but they were still going. I don't know if you guys can help uh, translate what was going on in this video. Please put it in the comments.
bizarre experience in a cemetery by the security guard. Look at that. It looks like an image or a young child. Where would they go? And, I mean, this guy clearly ran right up to the, the apparition of a child. And the child's going to be seen inside there. Right there. And she runs off. Yeah. So he heads in that direction. And here he goes. This guy never stops. She just completely disappears. And what's shocking about all this is that it's pitch black. The only reason it looks lit up is because of this gentleman's camera or, or the flashlight that he has. But this girl was, this girl or whatever it was, was running around completely in pitch darkness. Watch, I see her right there and runs towards that direction. Nina! Right, you would think at least a camera would have caught something. Oh, hey, there's me. And even if it wasn't a ghost, the fact that you have this young woman running around in the middle of a graveyard in pitch darkness, that's kind of uh, creepy. A nurse who monitors her patients has been noticing something strange in one of her clients' homes. Most of them are elderly and require 24-7 supervision while they are at home in case of emergency. Throughout the day, the nurse checks the security cameras that are installed in the patient's home to make sure they are safe and sound. When she visits the house of this one particular patient, she always gets a creepy vibe from their house. She always feels as though someone or something is watching her. Before she heads off to bed, she checks the cameras one last time to make sure everyone is safe. I'm gonna just be still so y'all can see. You see it moving in there again? Wow. What is that? Like, what's going on? On, the, on the, frame. the headboard area, something on the ground as see well. It move again. You see that? And, like underneath the bed, it seems like things are kind of like moving around and... Wow. And and this is from a movie. Um, I, I, I displayed this in one of my earlier clips. Hey, sweetie. You're home early. Mama Agnes, I thought you weren't this is supposed to be back till next week. Scary movie. Like, check it out. Look, look at the girl, the daughter. Oh. Apparently that's her mom. Is everything okay? Yes. And look, the, she's coming closer. Everything is fine. So she receives a call from her mom. But her mom is right there. Look sweetie? who's in front of her. Baby, what's going on, sweetie? What's going on? With wow. You? Goosebumps, sweetie? guys. <laughs> yeah. Hey, sweetie. This is a movie I totally want to watch. I mean, that's just scary. That's just freaky, you know? You, you think you're talking to somebody that you know, and then they're calling you on the other line. Okay, it's like a ghost-like apparition in this cave and it just walked right through the wall or something like that. Huh, real or fake? Smile. He usually appeared... Let's talk about the man with the upside down face. From the 1910s to the oh, 1960s, right this man was spotted and photographed with an upside-down face, that, usually giving some kind of creepy smile. 
He usually appeared after car accidents or big building fires happened. Here he is again actually inside of a car. And once again, he's never seen at the scene, only in pictures afterwards. Which makes this even creepier because is he causing these? Here he's seen after a fire happened, just lurking in the back of the crowd staring directly into the camera. It's assumed that he's some kind of grim reaper or force that feeds off of negative energy in the area, which is why he appears. But obviously he cannot be seen with human eye. Many have theorized that this man actually perpetuates the suffering of humans and encourages it. But this is a very creepy urban legend. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and follow for more scary stories. You won't believe what this man captured on camera. This Snow White statue at a Mexican theme park in Veracruz is said to be cursed. In this footage right here, you can see a man filming the statues of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And then, all of the sudden, the Snow White statue blinks. Oh. The man who filmed this video snuck into the theme park past midnight to try to prove the a legend, statue blinks. as it is said that the statues of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves come to life at night. This theme park, Reino Magico, receives thousands of visits each month, but few know its actual history. It was built on top of a cemetery. What do you guys think about that? Clearly, um... The statue looks like it blinks in the video, but how could it blink? Because it was the eyes are painted on. Uh, and that upside down face, that's scary stuff. Freaked me out. Thought I was crazy. Still haven't processed it fully. So, as I do every week, twice a week, I make deliveries to the same guy. I've been doing it for seven months. And it's the same guy every time I walk in. He's got a big garage with like a couple trucks in it. I walk in, I hand him his parts, we talk for a minute, I walk away. I go on my business. Today, I walked in. And he had his back to me, and he was working on his bench. And he must have heard me coming. I don't know, because I was actually pretty quiet, I thought. But when he turned around, I jumped and kind of grabbed my mouth like that because I didn't know what to think. And he laughed a little bit, and he called me jumpy. And, he's, and I was like, yeah, no, I'm just not feeling very good. And... I handed him his part and I was like, hey, I said, I gotta go. The reason I reacted that way is because when I looked at him, he was different. He didn't look like the same guy I saw every other time. Like a demon. First thing I saw was he had no color in his eyes, they were completely black. Like black. Like you couldn't even see. Reflections, it was just a black mass. And for some reason, his ears were kind of weird and they had like this little point like that. I don't know what that was. <coughs> Excuse me. But then I was talking to my friend and he sent me an article about them saying that a new disorder that's coming out where people are starting to see demon faces in people. And it got me thinking, if they're putting something like that out, could it be a disorder? Or is it hmm. God is actually letting people see demons and they're just trying to make it look like we're crazy? I can't, I still can't process it. I can't. I don't know. And, like, ever since the eclipse, it's, I find it funny. I, the clouds look different for some reason. I don't know what it is yet. I'm going to figure that one out. But that could be just me being dumb. The other thing I saw, like, I have perfect vision. So, I don't know what I saw. Um, if, if anybody else has ever seen this, can you please let me know? Because I'm kind of weirded think? out I mean, right he, now. He seemed pretty um, genuine. Right? Anyway, uh, it didn't seem God like bless, he was love you. really making Take this care. up. It seems like the way he's speaking is like talking from an actual account of what happened. He's relaying back 
reiterating what what he was privy to, what he was able to see. Um, I find it I find it very curious that his friend was able to search something that people are actually seeing this right they're seeing people that actually look like demon like demons you know with the demonic type of kind of an appearance with the black eyes pointy ears now are they demons or are they something else or could this just be something that's in his head maybe he watched a scary movie the last few nights in a row and for whatever reason he just kind of had this vision um really hard to say but uh Pretty weird, pretty scary stuff, uh, to say the least. Uh, it's pretty nuts. It's crunch time in this whole agenda, crunch time for the human race. This is the time when this network of interbreeding bloodlines wants to bring in its global fascist structure of a world government to which nation states would be administrative units um, of a world central bank and a world currency a, a currency sure that wouldn't be cash it would be merely electronic for which there are fundamental implications for human freedom and also the world army which is designed to be nato um, expanding and expanding as it is now of course to become the fully fledged world army world police force and underpinning that little lot is designed to be a microchip population in which we are microchip with our financial details our medical details etc etc um, and that would allow not only electronic tagging people knowing where we are all the time it would allow the external manipulation through this electronic means of our mental and emotional processes this will happen unless the human race wakes up and wakes up fast and to do that we need to understand what's really going on and to let people know that we've got to stop beating about the bush stop pulling punches stop pussyfooting around keeping information from people oh my goodness how will they react and just say this is going on take it or leave it make of it what you will but this is what's going sorry guys about the video there i'm not sure what happened but um th this video was uh, reportedly have uh, been shot back in 1998 okay so i mean we're talking about almost 26 years ago yeah, that's quite some time, right? Almost 30 years ago. And he's, he's already talking about, you know, things that are relevant to what's happening in today's society. Talking about NATO, you know, which is becoming like a global security force, police force, so, uh, in his words. He's talking about microchips and, and the advent of some of this technology and how it could potentially be used against us. Uh, very interesting. Very interesting. You know, is this, is this guy a time traveler? Did he come from the future? Is he trying to warn us? Uh, I mean, there's lots of stuff that's out there with people from that time, even earlier back in the, the mid 80s and, and even prior to that, of people who are talking about accounts that actually happened in detail to, in this time, in this era. How would they have known that back then? Pretty interesting. <laughs> Out of nowhere, the young child is pulled to the floor by something we can't see. At first glance, it looks like the child just simply slipped oh, yeah. and fell over. But if you look closely, you can see that her leg is pulled backwards by some invisible force. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Is this something paranormal? Wow. Yeah, it doesn't look like the child just naturally fell uh, by their own. It looks like somebody yanked their feet from underneath them. The next time I woke up, I was in a hospital. In the morning, a couple riding bicycles found me and took me to the hospital as soon as possible. I tried to tell my family what happened, but no one believed me, and they thought I had to have some kind of test on my head. When I went back to that cabin with my uncle, it was exactly the same as before. Nobody had taken anything. Everything was perfect, and that was absolutely terrifying. Do you know what was even scarier? Finding out from the doctor and my uncle that a few blocks away, there was no storm, not even a cloud. Everyone told me that it was a coincidence, that mine was a powerful cloud, but I know better. I have no doubt that the cloud was a tool to catch people distracted and not allow them to leave. Every night I think about what would have happened if I had been unlucky. Talk to greet me as happened to me many times. 
I waved back, but as I was waving, I noticed something that made me freeze. With the hand with which the lady was not greeting me, she was holding a huge knife. The moment I saw that, I took a better look at the lady and noticed that her smile was not as friendly as it seemed. She was staring at me with a penetrating gaze that felt like it could pierce my bedroom window. The hand she was waving at me was completely stiff and I could see her trembling with impatience. Absolutely terrified by what I was seeing, I stopped waving and ran to tell my parents. But when I told them what was happening, they were as frightened as I was and ran to my window, but the lady was gone. My father, still not satisfied with not seeing her, went out the door of the house, looking everywhere in the street. There was no one there either, and there couldn't possibly have been since he didn't see anyone on the sidewalk walking. At first, I thought she was just an old lady passing through. Hmm. I'd like to see the whole passing video through. on this. It seems like a pretty interesting uh, story, including the one before. Didn't really give us much context, unfortunately, in those shorts. I want to preface this one by saying viewer discretion advised, and also advising you against looking up the photo that I blurred out in the original slides. The slideshow that you guys just watched is a very disturbing story that took place in Japan back in 1999. The first slide shows Tokaimura, which is a small Japanese plant that was creating fuel for an experimental nuclear reactor. They were doing this by mixing uranium oxide and nitric acid. Because they breached safety protocols, they ended up incorrectly mixing the uranium oxide and nitric acid, which released a ton of radiation specifically on three workers. The worker that we're talking about in this video is this man right here, Hisashi. He received 17 cyverts of radiation, and for some perspective, five cyverts is considered fatal. He was then kept alive against his will by his family and doctors for around 83 days before eventually succumbing to a heart attack. Prior to this, he had ended up having three heart attacks during this 83-day period, in which every time he was revived. God, that's just scary. You know, when I, when I think about uranium and I think about, you know, radiation, uh, you know, places like Chernobyl where there's been disasters, and, you know, till this day, including areas in Japan, till this day, you know, there's countless number of stories that are coming out with people not not growing the same, you know, like not, not living the same way we do, you know, feeling all kinds of sicknesses and issues and the contamination in the soil and the food, you know, and the water that they consume, like everything all around them is like somewhat contaminated. And, and it's scary, man, because there, there's a lot of stuff that these people are going through. Um, we can't even fathom, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really scary what some of these chemicals can potentially do to somebody. That I posted yesterday, I thought it was only fair to include some details that I did not share in yesterday's post. Facial recognition searches initially came up with Chris Tyler or Christopher G, who was in fact a male model. Viewers of the video became concerned that Christopher hadn't been seen on social media after receiving tons of messages. Christopher made a video saying the mannequin was not him, but others who kept digging came across a man named Isaiah Bass. And although there are some articles online stating that this man has indeed wow. been missing after his communication with Balenciaga I have found no official reports of this case this is not the wow, first time so somebody the... went missing that last individual looked identical to this mannequin um, I'm gonna try to play this in one of my uh, you know one of my videos here uh, this is from ghost host spooks uh, you know uh, Mr. Sanchez absolutely incredible if you get a chance to definitely subscribe to his channel uh, in fact we we did a we did a we did a reaction video to um, to to one of his videos uh, that involved um, that involved some spooky encounters about something that happened with with his family and uh, skinwalkers and UFOs and stuff like that. So re really really cool. If you get a chance to definitely watch that. But this this is very shocking because I heard I heard people talking about this particular individual who went missing and happened to be very famous, a model of some kind. And all of a sudden you have this wax figure or something that looks identical to this individual, you know? Uh, but I, I need to understand a little bit more about the context as to why um, or what happened. Interesting. This is part two of a video I posted yesterday. Another strange thing about this toy is that people who say they have the same one claim that it doesn't even talk. Anyways, they brought it back home and asked it more questions. 
and it's just unsettling. Hola. Gracias, amigo. Me da gusto. Eres muy divertido. ¿Tienes una fiesta? Mm, no, no tengo fiesta. ¿Tú tienes? No sé. Cuando me levanté, te vi a ti. Ay, vas a chingar a tu madre. Wow. This mirror is flirting with this dude. Uh, how would it even know to react? Like that with those comments. Video was recorded by TikTok user Miss Alicia Nyan. One of her favorite places to record seems to be the washroom in her family's house. And while she started to perform her latest choreography there, she heard a strange noise from behind. When checking the footage a moment after, something didn't seem right. Wow, look at that. Look over her shoulder, her left shoulder. You could clearly see somebody there. It looks like there's a head appearing right behind her after she turns back towards the mirror. But what is it? Some viewers asked her if it could have been a deceased family member, perhaps. She states that this never happened before and that wow, she got startled that. quite a bit, especially since it was relatively dark in there. What do you guys think? Hey guys, that's all the time that we have today. Thank you so much for staying till the end. Uh, if you guys are new to the space, smash the like and subscribe and comment. If, if you know, I'd love to hear your guys' comments on these videos because obviously we're trying to separate fact from fiction. It would be really good to hear your guys' perspective. I know some of those videos are somewhat questionable uh, and some are just like hard to really explain. So uh, please comment again. I'd love to hear your feedback. And um, you know what, guys, uh, until the next time um, and until we meet again, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. And uh, in the meantime and in between time, thank you for watching this video. And I look forward to catching you guys on the next one. Peace.